Hello, in this video, we're going to take a look at creating a keyhole within Carveco. So this is the keyhole bit that I have, and it's from Whiteside. And if I just go down, the one that I have is the 3050 on a quarter inch shank. The larger diameter is three eighths of an inch. Okay, so it's pretty easy to do this within Carveco, to be completely honest. You just need to make sure that the entry and the exit points are exactly the same. Right, so let's switch over to Maker that I'm going to do this in. The first thing that I need to do is to set up this tool. So if I go to my tool database, click Select, and I'm going to add a tool. So I'm going to enter a description and I'll just call it a keyhole bit. The tool type is, if I come down here, is a slot drill or an end mill. Now, the reason that it's that is that there are no options to have sort of an undercut tool. Okay, so you won't be able to see this in the simulation. You'll just have to do a few test cuts. The most important part, as I said, is make sure the entry and the exit points are exactly the same. So just set it up as a slot drill or an end mill. And I've got tool number one, units is going to be in inches. The diameter for this is going to be the larger diameter of the keyhole bit. So for my keyhole bit, it is three eighths of an inch. So that's... Let me open that up. That's this section here. So that's where the head of the screw is going to fit into. Diameter 0.375. Now the step down, that needs to be the depth of the cut. So if I were to put the step down of say, I don't know, let's say 0 0.1 inches, what it's going to do, if I were to put say half an inch as a depth it's going to do five step downs and it's going to basically get rid of all the material that I actually want to leave in there because I want to leave an undercut in there and that's going to create the keyhole so I need to make sure that this step down is basically the full depth of what I want to actually cut to so in this example I'm going to cut down to eight millimeters that's what I actually done and that's 0 0.315. Now for the step down on this, it could be anything. I could literally do it at one inch. And then I know that I'll always be able to go down to that depth. So the step over size, that doesn't really matter too much because I'm always going to be machining along a line. So it's never going to be able to step over. So just literally put anything for the step over. It could be 10%, it could be 90%. I'll just put 50% for it. Spindle speed, I would imagine that somewhere on the white side website there are speeds and feeds for this and also on the packaging. Feed rate, I'm going to do this quite slow, let's say about 50 inches a minute and I'll do the plunger about half of that. And then select OK. And you can see that I've got this keyhole bit. And if you take a look at the image, it's just a standard end mill. So if I select OK, and then that's saved within that tool database. That's half of the battle is creating that tool. The next section is actually creating the path for it to go along. Now, if I were to draw a line, let's say like so and then exit it you can see what I get is this green point and this red point so what this means if I rotate around is that the tools gonna go in here and then come across here and then it's gonna come back out now obviously I don't want to do that with a keyhole bit I need it to come back to the start because we've undercut as it comes up to the top so I need it to go up to the top 
and then I need it to come back to the start point again. Now, the easiest way to do this is to literally create a line that comes across here and then another line that comes down. And to do that, what you do is create a line and I'm just going to put this in the center because then I can save the G code and then I can just use this piece of G code whenever I want, wherever I set my zero, zero up on my machine. It's going to be in the center. So if I go over to here and make sure that you've got your origin set to the center. If I go to view and show origin, you can see it's at the center. And what I'm going to do is create a line. So it's at zero and zero. And I'm going to click add point. And then you can see that that's snapped onto my zero, zero. Then what I'm going to do is come up in Y. So let's do this, let's say half an inch and then select add point. And then that jumps up half an inch and it's still locked on to the end of that. Now what you need to do is come across slightly. So what I'm going to do is set that to be zero zero one so it's going to jump over by one thing click add point so if i zoom it right the way in you can see that there's a small flat there it's only one thing you're not even going to notice it when you actually machine it and then zoom back out and then what i'm going to do is bring that back down to zero and add point now what i can do is right click so I can cancel it. So now if I zoom in here, you can see that I've got a start, which is the green, and I've got an end, which is the red. So it's going to enter and exit the material at the same place, which is what we want. Right, so to machine this, very, very easy. It's just literally machining down to the depth. So what we're going to do is create a profile toolpath and what I'm going to do firstly is make sure that you select this outside here and make sure that you select along because we need to follow along these vectors with the tool. The finish depth is going to be the depth that you want this to be. So I said previously, I think I've done this at eight millimeters, which works out to be 0 0.315. Select a tool. And this is going to be a keyhole bit. Click select. Just double check that my step down is greater than the finished depth because I don't want to do this in multiple passes. Otherwise it would take all the material out. I don't want to add any ramping moves to this because if I were to add ramping moves, it would zigzag down and it may take out a bit of the piece that I want to be left in. So I need to just go straight down with this. So make sure that you've got your safe Z and your home Z set up correctly. So I'll just put these at say quarter of an inch for both of them. And I'm going to define the material now this could be anything to be completely honest. It doesn't really matter for this. I'll just do it at let's say three quarters of an inch. Now you can still use this because I've set this to be at the top of the material. You can still use it on different types of material. So if it was half an inch, you could use it. If it was 10 inches, you could use it. It's all set from off the top. And you'll see when you see the G code that it's, it, it's quite a small piece of G code and you, you could actually edit the g-code pretty easy if you wanted to change it so i'll click ok and then select calculate now close that and then you can see the two plunges so this is where it plunges in it machines it comes back out and then it retracts so if you've got a dark blue line over here 
that means that it's going to exit where you don't want it to. OK, so you need them both to be over here at the, the very start. Now, if I were to simulate this, it's not really going to give me what I want. It's not going to show me pretty much anything that the keyhole is going to look like because we haven't specified that undercut in the tool, which we can't do. So what I need to do, I'll just show you if I simulate it, it just looks like a normal slot. So you've got to imagine that this is going down deep enough and you can see here on the tool, it's going down deep enough that it's leaving this shoulder. And it's going to leave shoulder around just this area here. So to save it, save the toolpath. And I've done this on a one finity. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's actually machining it in a moment. So let's go to my one finity. Let's use that one. Actually, let's use the inch one. And then I'm going to put this in my folder that I've just created called Keyhole. And I'm going to call this Keyhole Test. Click open. And I'm going to save this. So here you can see it's just a little bit of basic G code and you could probably change the sizes if you wanted a different size for this or you could just go back into the program and then just change that line that you've created. So what I tend to do is save this G code and I know that this is at zero zero and then whenever I've got a job that I need to create a keyhole I just zero zero at the place that I actually want it and then just run the job and it creates a keyhole for me. I've sent this over to our Onefinity machine and I'm just running the G code now. You can see that it plunges straight down, goes up and then it comes back out and exits at the same place. And that creates the keyhole. Just going to move this over by four inches on the controller software and then I'm going to reset my X and my Y positions and then I can run the toolpath exactly the same toolpath again. This is a really quick way of creating two keyholes that are a specific distance apart. So I hope that you found this tutorial useful and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.